Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. And uh, we are appreciative of our youth for being here to prepare uh, to give us a little demonstration or presentation of episode two of our reading drama called Castaways. And it won't be hard for you to pick up on the theme of being rescued. And it ties into the rescue that Jesus has done for us through his work on the cross, who is coming into the world. And so we're grateful and thankful for God's love through Christ. We'll follow along in this brief service that's printed. And I want to thank the ladies and uh, actually the, the committee that, uh, the fellowship committee of St. Peter's that put on the supper today. Thank you for, for a delicious meal. And thank you for so many for coming. I know there's a game going on uh, with Spencer for kids from our area. So we wish them the best. We did have a couple of absences from our youth. And I, I was able to grab a couple of parents to help out, so we have the full complement of readers, and we'll do the best we can with uh, just one rehearsal. So thank you for that. Before we begin, uh, let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, grant us eyes to see and ears to hear, and hearts to be open to what you have to share with us throughout this Lenten season of reflection on the cross, and the journey of Christ to save the world, to come into a world full of troubles, full of storms, full of waves, and at challenging times. We pray that we would welcome Christ into our hearts and be blessed tonight by this time together. In Jesus' name, amen. I have a little special music before we begin.
invite you now to turn to the 609 in your hymnal. Chief of Sinners, O I be.
gone without food and haven't eaten anything. Now I urge you to take some food. You need to survive. Not one of you will lose a single hair from his head. After this, he said, he took some bread and gave thanks to God in front of all of them. And he broke it and began to eat. They were encouraged to eat some food themselves. Altogether, there were 276 of us on board. And they had, <clears throat> and they had eaten as much as they wanted. They lightened the ship by throwing grain into the sea. When daylight came, they did not recognize the land. But they saw a bay, a sandy beach. They decided to run the ship aground if they could. Cutting loose the anchors, they left them in the sea, and at the same time untied the ropes that held the rudders. Then they hoisted the foresail and the wind made and made for the beach. But the ship struck a sandbar and ran out. The bow stuck fast and would not move. The stern was broken to pieces by the pounding surf. The soldiers planned to kill the prisoners and prevent them from swimming away and escaping, but the centurion wanted to spare Paul's life and kept them from carrying out their plan. He ordered those who could swim to jump overboard and get to land. The rest were to get away on planks and other pieces of ship. In this way, everyone reached land safely. <clears throat> I thought interesting that it is an exciting and harrowing story in the Bible of a shipwreck and a and uh, stranded on an island, there's more to it than that, so I'll just let you find that story in Acts 27 yourself. And this time, I'm going to call our youth forward and our readers forward, and and uh, we have thank you to, to uh, Mindy and Christina for helping us out with some absences. I will also read a part, because we're missing three out of our seven kids tonight. Oh well. <clears throat> so, you all know that uh, this is a story of, of six, six kids. One of a, one a local boy and five were uh, kids from Iowa who went down to the Caribbean for a vacation and a mission trip. They were going to take some medical supplies to an island, but on their way, a storm came and blew them out to the middle of the ocean, and they were lost at sea. And all of a sudden, a man turns up on a small boat named David. David was from the island they were going to. And David helped them find a little island to, to camp on. And that's what's the subject of our uh, story for today. So they've just come to the island and are trying to figure out what to do now. All right. This is a beautiful little island. It has fruit trees and a freshwater stream. Just think, Teresa, God answered our prayer. It was my prayer, remember? Yes, we remember, Jane. Now, we won't have to use up the supplies that we brought for the people. All we need to do is wait until our parents find us. I am so thankful that God is helping us complete the mission we came here to do. What would we have done if David had not come to help us? I'd like to know how David found us. He showed up out of nowhere. Yes, David, tell us how you knew you knew where to look for us. It did me faith. Me faith did lead by faith all the way. How could faith lead you here? When the storm comes, we get very afraid for you. First, we not know what to do. Did you know we were coming when the storm hit? That must have been where I sent the radio message. The storm hit very quickly after we called to let you know we were coming. I'm so glad you called the island station for that we know. You did find your way. Do storms often come here with no warning at all? It doesn't happen very often, but sometimes we get a freak storm like that. This was the worst one I've ever seen. We think, oh no, them young ones are going to catch in the storm. Them are going to get lost or maybe even drown. I pray, please God, don't let them little ones sit around in the ocean. Well, we didn't drown, but we sure got blown far away. <coughs> that is what we prayed for you too. We prayed you get blown far from the island and get lost for many <laughs> So we say we must go into the storm 
losing boat. Then we let the wind blow me boat where you both did blow. Are you saying that you went into the storm? You went there so that the storm would blow you just like it blew us? God tell me to go in the middle of the storm. Then maybe we could help you. That doesn't seem like a very smart thing to do, David. You could have drowned. Me take a chance. If me drown, then it mean that you would have drowned too. But if the wind just blow me far away, then it would blow me off the same way that blow you. That was a mighty big chance you took. You risked your life to help us. Me could not leave you alone. You come to help the islanders. Me want to help you too. We could not leave you for the lost one that walked up. Thanks, David. I can't believe that you would come into the middle of a, that scary storm just so you could be with us. And then you were able to lead us to the, uh, this island? God must be watching over us. <clears throat> now that we're here, what shall we do? Now here's the plan. It's going to be nice soon. Come, we all get for work. We are going to explore the island and look for food. You boys and girls start to build a shelter and to sleep in. And we start the fire. Alright, come on everyone. Some of us should look for tree trunks and long bridges in that forest over there. The rest see if you can find palm bridges from the roof. I'll go into the forest. I'll go with you. How many palm branches do we need? As many as you can get. All right, can you believe how David came into the storm to be with us? Why would he do something like that? He's probably been in storms before. The only way he would know where we ended up was to go with us. But it doesn't make sense. He just put himself in danger too. And if, if, and if he had found this island, we'd all be doomed. Do you remember what he said? He prayed that God would save us from drowning. Then God told him to go into the storm. So God sent him to us? That's amazing. He prayed for someone to deliver us, remember? It wasn't long after that that he showed up. But he would have to go into the storm a long time before I prayed. How did God answer my prayer before I even prayed? Do you suppose God can travel time? He heard your prayer and then went back in time and told David to help us? That is freaky. I remember reading a Bible verse. God knows what we need, even before we ask him. Do you know what else I thought of? It's just like the verse I was trying to remember. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. You see, David was sent just like Jesus to save us from perishing. That is cool. God sent Jesus into the world and sent world and he sent David into the storm for us. Now we are here alone. Now we are not alone. David said God sent him to us. However, it happened, it was God's doing. He answered our prayer before we even prayed. Here are some of those palm leaves for the roof. We'll probably need to go back for more. Looks like Nick and Teresa are on their way back. They found some nice sticks for building. Hey everyone, look what we found. What is it? It's a box. Down there past those trees, there's a pool of water. When we were looking around, there was a boat there, a ruined boat. This box was near it. We wondered if there was a treasure inside. Do you think we should open it? Yes, let's. And do you have a hammer we could use to break the box open? It's in the boat, but I don't think we should do anything right now. We have to hurry and make a shelter before it gets dark. The harm is there and just seeing what's inside. Whatever's in the box, we'll keep till later. 
Don't be in such a hurry. I'm just curious. As soon as I open it, I'll get back to work. <coughs> I'd rather ask David about it first. He can tell us what he thinks. Why don't we wait for him to come back? <laughs> don't be a spoiler alert, Andy. Here's the hammer. See if you can break it open, Nick. It's firmer than I thought it would be. Hit it again. That was a good whack. I heard the wood break. Breaking. There it goes. Now I can open the top. Oh, there doesn't seem to be anything in it. Wait, there's something at the bottom wrapped in cloth. It feels like a book. Here, let me get the cloth out. It smells awful. It is a book. Can you read what's in it? Well, it's a lot of scribbles. I think it's in a different language, but here in the middle of the page is a, a <coughs> map. It looks like a weird shaped island. Maybe it's this island. And look, there's a squiggly line that goes over to the, a place in the middle. And there's a cross at the end of the line. <coughs> Have you guys noticed the cross on that is on top of the hill over there? That's it. This is a map of the island. And there is something over there by the cross. I wonder if there's a treasure buried there. We'd better get back to work and start building our house. It looks like David is coming back. Hope you found some food. I'm getting hungry. Do we have some pots and pans to go with? There is a cupboard with all that stuff in the boat. I'll go get it. I think we need some more fire and tree, so let's go get some. I'll come and help. Hey, where's Nick? Wasn't he just here? I think he ran off into the forest. Maybe he is going to get some more sticks for the hut. We're going to need a lot more of those. While you're in the boat, why don't you grab some rope and one of the other cupboards? We'll, we'll need that to build with. Aye, aye, Captain. We see you have done some good work, my friends. We have made a start on our camp. Look what we have found for food. There are many roots and vegetables and even a bitty pig. Nobody should go hungry this time. Look, David. Nick found this box in the forest. What that? He found it near an old boat that was left there. There was a book in it, all wrapped in cloth. But to me, look. That's surprising. In the book there in the book there's a map that shows a cross on an island. Do you think it could be the cross over there on that on the hill? That could be, but it's not a good thing. What do you mean? We take it to grave with the pirates. Pirates? Are there pirates around here? They don't come around sometimes, but we should stay away from that place. It's where they're buried and dead. Them not like anyone touch it. Nick hasn't come back. I wonder where he went. Do you think he went to the hill to see the fox? Yes, everyone. I'm afraid that's where he went. I sure hope he doesn't get into trouble.
us have 